A man XXX Tentacion hated so much he tatted this guy's name on his body, who Playboy Cardi was a fan of as a teenager, the creator of one of hip hop's most influential groups that later became the blueprint for underground rap collectives, and arguably the reason ASAP Rocky and ASAP Mob became mainstream. Except in 2023, other than on Twitter, Space Ghost Perp is nowhere to be found. He's officially a decade past his prime, and has been written off by most people as a lunatic who was once a talented musician. But SCP's story is far deeper and deserves to be more than just a guy who goes on Twitter rants. I'm Rashad Fashir, and this is the true story of Space Ghost Perp. April 1st, 1991, Marcus Rowley, or Space Ghost Perp, was born in Carroll City, a neighborhood in Miami, Florida. Growing up, he was an avid skateboarder and loved music. He listened to Memphis rap like DJ Screw, Southern rap like 3-6 Mafia, as well as rock, punk, and metal. And his diverse taste in music would influence his lifestyle. He was an on and off skater in the hood and just loved the art of it. He had an interesting family life as well. His mother used to rap back in the day, and Perp even remembers her being in the studio with Bone Thugs and Harmony, a popular hip hop group. His father was strict and a man of discipline. He remembers every morning. Kick through your kick through the fing door. He's snapping on me. Early in the morning. What the f he snapping about? I don't know. This turbulent childhood is what fans think may have even caused him to act the way he did in the second half of his career. Later on, he was even diagnosed with Asperger's, a type of autism. These interests weren't typical for where Marcus grew up, the hood in Miami. And the people around him didn't take kindly to his interests. As a kid, he felt like an outcast for not being accepted by those around him, wearing gothic clothing, and painting his nails black. He'd say in an interview, people were like, why'd you paint your nails black? I'm like, I'm black and I like metal. This was very atypical in hip hop as well. But even at that age, Perp understood rap was changing, saying, they don't understand that hip hop isn't one thing anymore. It's all types. I see my as dark metal, folk rap. While skating in the hood, people would laugh at him and say, oh, this guy's just got some little jeans and fans on. On top of that, he wasn't from a nice place. It was really quite the opposite. He described Miami as a place where Kids 16 years old Don't have no future They don't see themselves trying to be nobody they, All they're surrounded by is I'm talking about cold blooded You just wake up A lot of talented kids in Miami like me out there And they out there dying for no reason you know what I'm saying? Since music was a big part of Marcus' life from a young age, he'd get involved in it young. At the age of 5, he began rapping after watching his friend Qaddafi and Dodo, the same people he'd later go on to start Raider Clan with, rap. In elementary school, they'd freestyle battle. When he was 13, SGP's cousin began making beats, and he was like, What the f is this? Like, and one day he had all his n in the rooms freestyling, and he was like, You wanna make a beat? I'm like, Alright, cool, you know what I'm saying? So I got on, and man, when I said, so hard, man. Until the age of 14, Perp was living in Florida. But when he was 14, he moved to Atlanta. Um, stayed out till I was about 18. In high school, he began pursuing a career in music, eventually graduating high school early and began to release music. That period of Perp in high school was tough. His best friend Darius passed away and Perp couldn't get a job. So for the most part, SCP's early life was filled with struggle, pain, and loss, from which he tried to make art to make sense of it all. Perp's first releases were beats he'd upload onto SoundCloud under the name Money Jordan and was influenced by Lex Luger. He got the name Space Ghost Perp from his lifestyle. He was DJing in the neighborhood, chopping and screwing, and of course, Perp. While still living in Atlanta in 2008, Perp created Raider Clan, and when he moved back to Miami, him, Dodo the Don, Gaddafi, Money Jr., and his late friend Jit formed Raider Clan Records. The roster didn't begin to expand to its talent filled roster until Jit died, SCP's best friend who was murdered over a dice game. Over the next couple of years, Raider Clan would expand and recruit members that would flourish later on in their own careers. Denzel Curry, Chris Travis, Eddie Baker, Xavier Wolf, Ruben Slick, and even Black Cray. At one point, there was Raider Clan Miami, Raider Clan LA, Raider Clan New York. It was supposed to be global, distinctly in their sound, style, and marketing, all while bringing goth culture to rap before anyone. He came up with it when he was 17, and it was to promote youth and black talent. And due to his interests, he felt shunned by his community and wanted to create a culture that was more accepting, going as far as creating a skate team for Raider Clan. In 2009, he released Money Accardo under the name Joker Jr. on MySpace. The name came from his childhood nickname. Joker Jr. Because I was like a, like a skit, so I used to always, I used, I used to always fight and laugh and <laughs> in 2010, he created a YouTube channel called Space Ghost Perp MJ13, 
And 2010 was also when Perp released his debut mixtape, NASA, which most popular song, Friday, is still SCP's most streamed song on streaming platforms. NASA was an incredibly experimental project for its time, combining 80 samples and Memphis production, and this tape, along with his other work, would eventually be credited as what helped birth funk, a huge genre in SoundCloud in the 2010s. This mixtape was truly ahead of its time. Funk and soul, pop and 80 samples with trap drums and rap were influenced by SCP. Even the distorted 808s he'd used became huge in Florida's underground rap scene, with artists like XXXTentacion and Ski Mask the Slump God rapping on them. So NASA, combined with the string of beat tapes and mixtapes he'd released prior, gave SCP quite a bit of hype and promise as a future star. In 2011, Raider Clan was nearing its peak and SCP released his most popular and one of his most influential rap projects of the decade, Blackland Radio 666. With the release of Blackland Radio, SCP's popularity surged and it even landed him a record deal. Blackland took old samples and recontextualized them, and came out before that style of trap went mainstream. Like much of SCP's early work, the tape was ahead of its time and it became the blueprint for Raider Clan as well as the influence for many other groups. It all started with Blackland Radio 66.6. Six. That's how it all started. It's a pirate radio thing? What's that? Yeah, tell us what that is. Space Ghost Perp came out with this tape called Blackland Radio 66.6, Six, which created like this whole wave within the underground. Who else was influenced by Blackland? ASAP Mob, specifically ASAP Rocky. The all black clothes, gold grills, samples, and trippy sounds that ASAP Mob would eventually incorporate into their style and music were undoubtedly from Perp. SCP also used hieroglyphics, which can be seen in the Blackland album cover, where V's are A's and X's were other vowels. And it became quite popular in underground rap at the time, such as ASAP Mob, and is actually the reason why V Lone, ASAP Bari's brand, uses a V instead of A. Perp would go outside and tag walls with the hieroglyphics alphabet because he felt like no one understood him, and he'd communicate with fans on the internet, such as on Twitter, as well. But Perp's obsession with hieroglyphics goes deeper than just internet aesthetics. In an interview, he explained that he'd studied Egyptian history because he was proud of his ancestors from Africa. At a young age, he'd get the eye of Horus tatted on his neck, comparing the way Horus guided people to Egypt to how he'd like to guide artists in Raider Clan and Miami, saying, I'm not gonna say f off, especially when they need help. I help people, that's why I got it. And he definitely helped ASAP Rocky and the rest of the ASAP mob. Rocky was a huge fan and had discovered Perp through Tumblr, and Yams really messed with Perp as well after being introduced to a fellow Raider Clan member, Matt Stoops. If Rocky was here, he'd tell you, like, he was like, yo, you inspire a lot of my. Sh like, he told me straight up, like a man. Like, he told me, he's like, yo, I, I admire what you do. Rocky supposedly even told Perp that he changed his life, and Perp appreciated the love coming from New York. In August, Rocky and Yams reached out to Perp and told him to come out to New York. So Perp packed his bags and headed up north. Rocky and Perp hit it off immediately, becoming great friends and during their short time together, Perp and Rocky had incredible joint performances, stash house freestyles on YouTube, and music. And through working with Perp, ASAP Mob started to combine the chopped and screwed sound of Houston rap with the dark sound of Perp and Memphis rap. They became like family. Perp would call Rocky his twin, it's my twin space those and they would even call their hip hop duo twins. Twin situation. That's the name of our duo group. Like Nas Barkley, we wanted aliases, so that's why we use different names. Oh, the name right. of us is Twin, and it stands for Two Wild Ignorant. SCP's project, Black Man's Wealth (BMW), released in 2012, was originally supposed to be a joint project with Rocky. They even used to call each other ASAP Perp. Perp was even good friends with Rocky's mom. I talk to that mama every day. She took me in her crib. When I was, out, I was at her crib, oh, wow. she was feeding me. She was making sure I was good. And Rocky, in a complex interview, said they would share dinner plates. Yams and Perp were just as close. In October of 2011, Perp and Rocky performed together at a club called Santos, according to Perp. There were even rumors that Drake was in the crowd, trying to sign Perp and Raider Clan to OVO. When we did that show, that changed everything. Like, OVO was you know, so Drake pulled up. Yeah, Drake, you know, Drake was like, I don't know who the that perp is. He told Venus that he's like, I don't know who that perp is, that the devil is. At the end of the month, on Halloween, ASAP Rocky dropped Live Love ASAP, with SGP featured on two tracks. It became a huge mixtape for underground rap, with trippy, cloudy, atmospheric beats. And the ASAP mob was launched into stardom. ASAP Rocky signed a massive $3 million record deal, which was huge for ASAP mob as well. Perp would see more mainstream recognition, making two appearances on Juicy J's mixtape and even producing for other mainstream rappers like Wiz Khalifa. In 2012, Perp was back in Miami with members of Raider Clan like Denzel Curry, 
whose tape Perp was featured on. That same year, Perp signed a record deal with 4AD, a British indie label. Through the label, he realized his first album, Mysterious Funk, Chronicles of Space Ghost Perp, which consisted of mostly remixed songs, went on to become another highly influential project. Media pages like Pitchfork had quite positive reviews of the album and so did listeners and fans. And things were looking promising for both Perp and Rocky's careers. But nothing good lasts forever. ASAP Mob started to feel like SCP and Raider Clan were riding the mob's popularity and Raider Clan started to feel like ASAP Mob was biting their style. SCP was also feeling pressured to sign to Rocky's label and eventually declined which made things even more tense. All of a sudden, a member of ASAP Mob, ASAP 12 e and SCP started beefing on Twitter. And ASAP 12 e even went as far to tell SCP to suck it. ASAP Rocky even dissed Raider Clan on a remix of a song called Yao Ming, saying, Them Raiders be like haters. Think where you got your style from. You guys old as my little man. However, ASAP Nast took to Twitter and said it was all love, and the beef was squashed. SCP then produced ASAP Rocky's Pretty Flock Up. However, in April of 2012, ASAP Mob played an unreleased Space Ghost Perp song at Coachella prompting Perp to get mad at ASAP Yams, but they patched that up quickly and Perp was doing good. He had support from his peers like Odd Future, who had been playing his music at shows since Blackland dropped, and even toured in 2012 with a punk band named Trash Talk. However, an insignificant event from months prior would rekindle the beef. At one of Rocky's and Perp's shows, a heckler was in the crowd and SCP, along with a few members of ASAP Mob, decided to give the fan the beats. Rocky was performing hating on him. I f whooped at, at Rocky's show, I think, yeah, Rocky at one time, boom, you know, Rocky would turn. This event didn't really mean anything at the time, but months later, that fan decided to press charges, and Perp was in Miami, visiting his family. Members of the ASAP mob accused Perp of running from the police, despite him being unbeknownst to the charges. When he found out, he told them he turned himself in. He was trying to sue. He was trying to sue us. It was like, you gotta turn yourself in to the police. I turn myself in, like, for one day, that ain't yeah. But Rocky told him otherwise. So I told Rocky, I said, I'm gonna turn myself in. He's like, nah, twin, don't do that, don't do that. Members of ASAP Mob still decided to call him out. Talking about he had from the police and shit. Police? I'm out here with my family, bro. What do you mean? Like, I called his phone, I said, fool, how the fuck am I on the police? Well, I told you I was gonna turn myself in. I went back up there to finish that. Right. I turned myself in, like that shit ain't nothing. Members of ASAP Mob still decided to call him out. To him, it was clear. Some some was in his ear. I, I wasn't know. Some was in his ear saying, I'm hiding from the police. The beef wasn't that serious until now. Most of it was just through the internet. And there wasn't any serious bad blood. Just tensions between SGP and Raider Clan and ASAP Rocky and the mob. However, it would finally actualize on June of 2012 when ASAP 12 e jumped Matt Stoops at a party in New York. 12 e and Perp were never friends, but this event was a huge shock to Perp because he had only shown love to Rocky and the mob. On Twitter, Perp claimed jumping Stoops meant war. He wanted nothing but the best for everyone in Raider Clan and everyone in ASAP Mob, and even tried to mend the situation with Rocky over the phone. Rocky, a New Yorker, told him to off. This was a massive betrayal for Perp, and that same month, Perp posted a video with Raider Clan, announcing they'd no longer be affiliated with the ASAP Mob. On BET, Rocky responded to SCP in a red carpet interview where he said, Space goes perp, man. What's going on with that, B? F him, f him. Straight up, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to lie to people, pumping that we took styles from him. And I mean, if you really look at it, the proof is in a pudding. He's corny, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, stick to making beats. That's all I got to say. And in a hilarious and ridiculous turn of events, even Soldier Boy was dissing SGP. During that time, Perp was still doing pretty well. He even announced a project with Odd Future, who had continually shown love to Raider Clan since they got some buzz. However, it never came out. And the beef with ASAP Mob was far from over. A few months after Matt Stoops was jumped, Rocky performed at Miami with Schoolboy Q, Perp's hometown. Perp and Raider Clan were banned from the show, but showed up outside. Schoolboy Q saw them outside and called the police. Rocky stayed inside his tour bus, but one of the members of ASAP Mob had a bit more courage. He was practically unknown at the time and bravely jumped the fence to face Raider Clan. Almost immediately, he was brutally jumped by Rob Banks and other members of Raider Clan. They were fired and everyone dispersed. The police had showed up and even cuffed Perp. However, he wasn't arrested and that was that. That member of ASAP Mob that got jumped that night went on to be ASAP Bari. From then on out, ASAP Rocky and the mob became stars in rap, and Perp's beef with them became pretty one-sided, with ASAP Rocky going without mentioning his name for years, and when he finally did it, it was out of pity. Years later, Rocky claimed he 
I can never talk about this because I'm blowing up. And if I talk about it, I'm make this put more light on this. And that all people had to do was look at Perp's own crew. None of his is with him in the crew because they realized that he was manipulating them and you know I'm saying doing all this shit like. And said later, you lived with us for six months, bro. Like, don't make it seem like you know what I'm saying. Perp reflected and said, we were so young, like, and Yams. I guess he was the oldest. He was just trying to see what he could do. And that we was young, high. Uh, out of our mind like and living in the moment right you know what i'm saying like if that happened now we want this want to happen and perp explained it best everything fell in place how i wanted to like uh 2012. shortly after the show scp announced the word on the street is you're taking a little time off from rapping and going back mostly producing but he didn't actually quit rap as he threatened in december of that year he dropped his tape bmw which stood for black man's wealth and it turned out to be one of his best tapes. However, in 2013, Perp stepped back into the shadows. At this time, his popularity was beginning to diminish, and other members of Raider Clan like Denzel Curry and Xavier Wolf were starting to get much bigger than him. Eventually, members like Denzel Curry, Eddie Baker, and Chris Travis left the group and would go on to have massively successful careers in the underground. When Raider Clan dropped its first collaborative mixtape, without those members, the tape flopped. At this point, it was evident Perp's dark southern style was losing popularity and no longer was the new wave in the underground. Dreamy cloud rap like Young Lean and Black Cray was what was popular and in. Ironically, these sounds were what Perp had experimented with and helped pioneer in his earlier work, such as his NASA mixtape. In 2014, with the release of BMW 2, Perp's own fanbase began to turn their back on him. But in New York, things were going more than well for ASAP Rocky and the mob, who had in Perp's eyes taken all the credit for Perp's style. He'd go on internet tirades and began acting in a way that made it hard for fans to take him seriously. For example, in 2014, Perp would start to beef with a kid rapper named Lil Shark. It was obvious Lil Shark was just joking in his diss tracks and someone older was behind it, but Perp said some pretty crazy things about him. At one point, his website even got hacked and linked to Lil Shark's website. He was a laughing stock. Seven years later, in 2021, Lil Shark passed away at the age of 17 and Perp said some more horrible things about him. Moving forward from the incident, He'd become more mentally unstable, and his reputation was in shambles. The newer audiences in SoundCloud rap weren't familiar with Perp, and the younger Raider Clan members that Perp had scouted had started to become more successful than him. In 2015, Raider Clan was practically gone, and it was Perp's doing, but he was about to go on another run in the underground. And at the beginning of the year, he began to drop like the old times, releasing tapes like Dark Angel and Money Mendoza. At this time in the scene, rappers like XXXTentacion, Ski Mask the Slump God, Puya, and even former Raider Clan members like Denzel Curry had taken the spotlight in Miami and South Florida. And Atlanta was leading the wave with artists like Lil Yachty, Lil Uzi Vert, and Playboy Cardi. These artists were all fans of Perp when they were young. Their tweets of Cardi expressing it was on Perp's and Raider Clan's side in their beef with ASAP Mob. Lil Uzi had tweets asking Perp for beats, which he did get and Perp eventually produced for him. And Yachty fanned out when he met Perp at a party. Perp was onto it and moved to Atlanta, where he lived in his later teenage years to resurge his popularity. During his time there, he worked with artists like Una the Activist, Thousand and Banfani, OG Mako, Father, and Polari. This was when he dropped songs like Terror Gang with artists like Black Cray, Polari, Fani, and YSBOG, who would go on to have flourishing careers themselves. However, Perp's beef with the ASAP mob would catch up to him in Atlanta. After ASAP Bari got embarrassed at that show years before, he never quite forgot and resented Perp forever. So much so that he decided to stop and nothing to blackball SCP as much as he could. Whenever Perp would get close with someone, Bari and his affiliates would get in their ear to tear them away from him. Perp was quite close with Uno the Activist and Thousand Man Fani, who at the time were young underground artists with promise, who Perp saw something in. Bari found out and invited them to New York. Not because he thought they were talented like Perp did, but because he wanted to turn them against Perp. He was successful and Uno and Fani switched up on Perp, claiming ASAP and V-Loan, as well as people like Lil Yachty. Bari and ASAP Mob would even get Playboy Cardi to be against Perp, someone who Perp didn't have any relation to, but as I mentioned earlier, Cardi was a fan of Perp. When Cardi announced he signed to ASAP, he told the crowd, <laughs> Then, Cardi and Uno the activist dropped Villon Thug, where Cardi dissed SCP's dead best friend, saying, Jit in a blunt, which ASAP Bari was likely behind. This betrayal was definitely a tough blow for Perp, and it would send him on another internet tirade. When Bari was turning a bunch of young rappers against Perp, he definitely was looking for a reaction and got one out of him. In the beginning of the year prior, 2015, on January 18th, ASAP Yams died. And in the beginning of 2016, Perp decided to diss the late ASAP Yams on Twitter and on video. 
He even got one of his artists at the time, Chapo, to diss Yams on a song. On top of dissing Yams, SGP was constantly disrespecting former Raider Clan member Denzel Curry. Denzel didn't want to diss SGP out of respect, but XXXTentacion told Denzel he had to close this chapter by letting SGP know he wasn't going to be walked all over. And Denzel dropped Space Ghost featuring Ski Mask the Slump God, Lofty of Metro Zoo, and XXXTentacion. Two days later, Denzel and X released Purposely, a second diss on SGP. SGP dropped Training Day End of Denzel Curry, a diss on Denzel the same day. A month later, X dropped I'm Sipping Tea in Your Hood, the third diss on Space Ghost Perp. They'd create the F Perp trend. X hated Perp so much, he got Perp tatted on his right arm. And XXXTentacion and Space Ghost Perp had a weird relationship. X had a lot of respect for Perp for many reasons. Man, he, he had such a pull that I was so proud of him as a person and just proud of what the f he was doing because he was breeding a sound for the underground which had never, ever, ever made a it different out. Different sound. What you don't understand, bro, is ASAP ended up on MTV. M yeah. ASAP en ended up on the MTV Awards. ASAP <laughs> ended up on this and Perp could have been right there mm. breeding the sound for Florida. But he didn't condone how SCP acted. He's a big Do you feel me? But like... At the end of the day, X thought... Every get their homage you got my respect in the end of the day you a but you still got my respect for what you were you feel me i got i got perp tatted on me the f perp trend got so big everyone was dissing perp former raider clan members like eddie baker and many young rappers that were huge fans of perp decided to hop on the trend as well in 2012 lil yadi was tweeting scp was a god three years later he was calling him a Bari even managed to get his hands on him as well. Yeah. Perp was, you know what I'm saying, an underground legend. Yeah. I was excited. You know? Even Smoke Perp tried to hide the fact he was a huge fan of SGP before the F Perp trend started in his interview with No Jumper. Perp, for once, had a pretty mature response to all the hate from young rappers, saying, I don't know them, bro. I never met them. You know, like Yachty said, he said, he seen me at a party. He said, what's up? I said, what's up? Can't be moving. I don't know y'all. I ain't grew up with y'all. Right, right, right. You know, I don't, I don't hang with them. That's it. Even admitting talent is talent. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, if you got if you talented Amen. and you making an impact, I with it, bro. I don't give a what it is. Him, Dex, um, D Savage. Whether they liked him or not. In October of 2016, he apologized for dissing the late Yams and dropped an unreleased song with Rocky titled Rip Yams. A year later, he even explained he had made up with Yams and made things right with him before his death. SCP also formed a new group, BMB Death Row, or Black Money Boys, with Chapo, and it would include a ton of artists, most notably underground rappers like Rushy Bands and Curb Group. and Perp began to drop a lot of music, seven tapes in just 2016. Over the past years, and since then, he's dropped an array of music. In 2017, he dropped Angry America, featuring a song called I Know In Velo Now, Referencing Bari jacking his hieroglyphic swag to create the v logo. A couple of months later, a video of ASAP Bari R-wording a woman was released and his deal with Nike was terminated. His reputation has been shattered ever since. From 2017 to 2019, Perp wasn't very active, just riding the wave of popularity he had retained and released quite a lot of music, but stayed kind of low-key on social media, for the most part. In 2017, he'd work with rappers like Lil Tracy, and in 2019, he was booked to perform in Rolling Loud, where he had a semi-reunion of members from Raider Clan, like Kiniata, Denzel Curry, and Nell of Raider Clan. In 2019, he even fell out with Chapo, one of his artists. In 2020, he created a new group, Vodechi, and reignited his beef with ASAP Rocky, claiming ASAP Rocky was gay and he was cut off because he didn't tell Perp he was gay, so he blacklisted Perp. However, a couple years earlier, he actually said, You're gonna be back in the studio with, uh, with Rocky anytime soon, bro. If I see him, it's gonna go down. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make sure um, me and him squash that. Sh it's, it's time. 2020 was also the year when Playboy Cardi dropped a whole lot of red, and SCP was not a fan of Playboy Cardi using that aesthetic, something SCP had done years earlier, and thought Cardi was being inauthentic, prompting him to drop a couple of disses. Ever since then, he's actually been dropping music quite frequently and going on some pretty funny internet tirades. Most notably, the video of him dissing everyone on Earth. In 2020, he dropped. Dade County, which got 700,000 views on YouTube, but he doesn't seem very interested in dropping and promoting his music seriously. These days, he just likes to have fun. Space Ghost Perp had an idea of what he wanted to see in rap, and he made it happen. I feel like I inspire a lot of people enough to bring back what I wanted to see in, in rap. He was a trendsetter and inspired a group of artists that would gain massive industry success. Reflecting on his behavior over the years, he was betrayed quite a lot, clearly suffers from mental issues, and has had a hard life. 
So I'll leave the ethics of how he's behaved over the years up to your own judgment. At the end of the day, Perp failed to reach his potential in the industry, and his arch nemesis ASAP Rocky said it best. It was a dope time in underground hip hop, and he he could have made something of himself, but I think he just was too caught up in uh, too caught up in the, the foolishness. Of Man, my man rather be at home talking to himself on cameras. But it's hard, actually impossible, for me and most people not to respect someone who's so ridiculously authentic. If you want to hear more of my personal thoughts on SCP as a person, his career, and just other rare information, watch part 2, The Influence of SCP, linked in the description and comments. If not, thanks for watching and have a nice day.